Hi, and welcome to a newly titled show. It's still the Chris Lejean show, but um, yeah. it's still the Chris Lazar show, but I mean, it's not the Chris Lazar. I'm still here as Chris Lazar, but this is a thread. This is a new name because it's not just about me anymore. It's about everybody else. I plan, I'd like to get like a guest on every day and like the thread is something like a group, like everything connected. And I got like a core of friends with all differing ideas that, um, you know, it's, I, I'd like to get them on and discuss things with them, whatever it may be. Uh, today we're going to have Joe. I'm I'm sorry here. I should get a little closer to this. We're going to have Joe back on for to discuss the Michigan game. Um I promised, I told you guys the last the next time I would post, it would be more positive, but this just it's got we got to hash this out. We have got to hash this out and I brought in Joe. Joe is a um Joe's an optimist, a Michigan optimist, and me, I'm I'm a little more of a pessimist. I really am. As I'm trying to find a sound effect here <laughs> for when Joe comes in. What about this one? Okay, yeah, that would work. <laughs> you like how I get the big applause for me, and then when Joe comes in, he's gonna get, oh, uh, he he he's gonna get the the little golf clap little bit of a golf clap all right we're gonna we're gonna call joe right right now and we're calling him yeah but um god bless how you doing joe uh you know all things considered you know i'm doing all right um would prefer to be uh, in Indy right now, but you know, the the people are golf clapping for you. I don't know if uh, you heard that. Yeah. These things happen. <laughs> golf clap for you. I got a roar of applause because I'm a Michigan realist, and you're an optimist, and I appreciate I that am about an, you. <laughs> I I am an optimist, but I would say that there's like, I don't know. A lot of people beg to differ, but there's some, like, I do have some realism. It's just, I mean, I'm sure we'll dive all into it, but, I mean, it's funny how expectations kind of evolve over a year because if you went into this season saying, oh, 10 and 2, like, everybody would have been like, okay, yep, yeah, we'll take it. And then as the season kind of progressed, it was like, okay, well, now the, the goalpost kept getting moved or the bar kept getting higher. So, I mean isn't that though like that's that's just how things go if you're on a roll you gotta like you start to expect different things like after the Notre Dame loss I was like oh god we suck like we should have won that game next thing you know we rip off nine ten wins and I'm like well we really got a shot at it it'd be really disappointing if we don't take advantage of it and and it just Again, another year where we were in position and it didn't work out. It's like, how many more yeah, of these years I mean, are can I take? I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, losing to Ohio State is getting tremendously old. I don't like it. Nobody likes it. But at the same time, I think people need to take a step back And, yeah, you can argue that 10 wins isn't as good as it used to be when, you know, there's an extra game now built in with, like, a conference championship. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, this program is in so much better shape than it was four, five, six years ago. And I know you can attest to that. I No, I I do agree with you there. it's especially coming from the Rich Rodriguez days. I mean, 
And my, my friend was telling me this because we were talking about Rich Rod, and I'm a Rich Rod apologist, as you might know. <laughs> but he of said course. that Rich Rod probably set the program back about 10 years. Which, hey, yeah. I might not, I'm not going to argue with that just from a recruiting standpoint. The defense uh, switching over to that three three five bullshit, and then having to switch it back with Hoke to four three, getting in all those players like that. That really did set us back. And to, I mean, you're right now, where it is right now, ton, like so much better than the Rich Rod day. I mean, hell, even the Hoke days, so much better. Yeah, and I mean, you know. It's one of those things, right, where uh, people will point and say, okay, yeah, it's so much better, but you still haven't been to Indianapolis. You still don't have any Big Ten titles. I mean, and this is where the debate kind of comes in. I mean, if you're going if you're going eight and four, seven and five, and I know Harbaugh had his eight and four year, mm-hmm. but that's kind of, I mean, to me, that's just kind of like the basement of where the Michigan program is going to be. It's never, it's not like, I would be shocked if we ever see like a seven and five, uh, definitely never going to see six and six in my opinion under the Harbaugh regime. Um, no, I, I, where obviously, you know, the argument, you know, of course is, yeah, Harbaugh is making a lot of money. My rebuttal to that is whoever's at U of M is going to be making a lot of money. Yeah. Um, you know, is he is he paid that extra money to go and win the Notre Dame game, to go and win the Ohio State game? And yeah, I think I think the expectation is is that you need to win those games. But at the same time, if he doesn't, I mean mm-hmm. nothing nothing's really gonna happen until he decides to leave. And I know that's not exactly it doesn't paint like the prettiest picture, but it's that if you want some if you want a dose of reality that's what reality is. Mm. And do I think those games are going to end up kind of turning into some W's? I do. Um, you like, you like we were going off of, I mean, and I, you know, people are going to say it's an excuse. People are going to point to other coaches that have turned programs around a lot quicker. I mean, yeah, if you want my honest opinion, I think Harbaugh almost kind of did himself a disservice by taking that first team to 10 wins. I mean, People, when Harbaugh got there, when got got to Ann Arbor, people were th- were saying, "Oh, seven and five would be a good year." Well, he took them to ten, and everybody was like, "Okay, well." And then you started getting all these expectations, and mm-hmm. so it's just—I mean, I don't know. Joe, that that's a interesting point you bring up, and I, you're right, man. Anybody who Michigan, and I actually looked this up. Uh, like a couple days ago, every single year, the Ath- Michigan Athletic Department always like one of the top revenue um, streams out of like, I mean, you put it up there with Texas and Ohio State. So they're always going to pay their coaches well. I mean, hell, Hoke was one of the highest paid coaches in, in the country. Yeah. Um, I believe Rich Rod was too. Uh, plus, with the whole buyout fiasco, I mean, they paid him a lot of money. Um, I see what you're saying with that, definitely. But what did, I mean, when I look at Harbaugh's career, I mean, he, okay, look at, let's exclude San Diego, uh, like the FCS stuff. Um, At Stanford, he he never won the Pac-10. In the NFL, or Pac-12, or, you know, whatever, I don't know when it changed over. Right, right. In the NFL, he got to the Super Bowl, but he didn't win it. And I know they had a lot of success there, but he didn't quite finish the big game. And now here at Michigan, again, hasn't quite finished that big game. I just, I I do think the program is better, but I don't know. I know we talked about this last time. I don't know if, if Harbaugh is the coach to get us over the hump much like john cooper at ohio state couldn't get those ohio state teams over the hump and i don't know if you might disagree with that um 
I no, hope he is. Definitely, there's definitely an argument uh, to be made about kind of Harbaugh's track record. Is he kind of like fool's gold where he does well but doesn't kind of at the same time doesn't really accomplish anything? And, you know, I definitely hear that argument. I think it, you know, does – there's some valid validity to it. Um, what I would say is uh, he hasn't stayed at places very long. Um, mm-hmm. So he might not have always – have been I don't want to say afforded the opportunity because nobody made him leave um, Stanford nobody made him kind of leave outside of San Francisco let's just say nobody's kind of said okay well you know it's time for you to move on Um, you know I I would point to I'd point to like somebody like Dabo Sweeney I mean uh, yeah it's kind of a weird comparison Michigan and Clemson but People were ready, like Clemson fans were ready to get rid of Dabo. Dabo left to South Carolina five years in a row. Yeah, I saw you. That's, that's, yeah, that's their that's their rival. And I mean, can you imagine, like, where would Clemson be right now if they had kind of didn't stay the course and just said, yeah, you know what, uh, Dabo, it's uh, you know this isn't working out. Uh, best of luck to you. <laughs> I mean. But like, now, Joe's Clemson, last time I checked, has won their their senior class has won like something ridiculous, like 50, 50 games already. I mean, it's insane. Where's that's at Clemson? Yeah. Wow. Now, Joe, that that zero and five record against South Carolina was that his first few years, like his first five years there? Yeah. So so his first five as a head coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, as the full time head coach, he so he took over. Oh man, I want to say like twenty twenty ten, maybe he uh, somewhere in there. I could be off by a year. Um, I see here a two thousand eight. He might have been an interim, but then two thousand nine yeah, was like so, full season. Right. So he did. He did beat them his interim year, but mm-hmm. his first five years as like the, as the head coach, he he lost, and mm-hmm. I mean. And I don't, you know, it's one of those things where people, people listening would take this as, okay, it's an excuse or, oh, you're, you know, you're setting the bar too low or, you know, something like that. But it's like, I mean, I just, you know, that's just one good example that comes to mind of somebody who, you know, stayed the course, um, had the support and, you know, look at them now. I mean, maybe besides Bama and, I don't. I can't think of anybody else who's been as dominant the last over the course of the last four or five years. The, no, they are. They are a powerhouse right now, Joe. I will say though that those first years for Dabo, he, because um, I'm looking at it right now on Wiki, and he did win yeah. the division. The that first year he won the conference his third year, won the division again his fourth year. So it's like, you know, he he was getting to the ACC title game and he he won it that one year. And it's like you could kind of – like if Harbaugh made it to the Big Ten title but lost to Ohio State, do you think people would overlook the Ohio State loss? Because I might. Yeah. A little bit. So I think – I think Michigan fans would a little bit more the ones that are kind of on them um, a little bit. Uh, I think they would, you know, kind of, okay, whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. that sucks, but hey, we're going to the Big Ten Championship. But then I, you know, I think from an outsider perspective, like a lot of uh, the Big Ten fans across the country that that can't stand Harbaugh, can't stand Michigan, they point and say, oh, well, he kind of, they just kind of slipped their way into the Big Ten championship, like had Ohio State lost to Maryland uh, <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Yeah, um, I see that kind of both ways. But one thing I will say is, I and again, I'm not not trying to make excuses, but I will say that 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 ACC that uh, Dabo went through his first five years didn't have an Ohio State in it. And they didn't have a really talented Penn State team. Who, by the way, That's I mean, Penn State, 
And people point and say, oh, James Franklin's been to Indy. James Franklin won in Indy. Michigan beat that team like 49 to 10. I mean, it's just it's just one of those things where mm-hmm. I don't want to say a Big Ten title doesn't mean as much because I really want it. Mm-hmm. But I think with the way the divisions are kind of uh, structured, it's just it's not like a true overall Big Ten champion. I mean, I don't. It's just I think it's slightly flawed, but that's my opinion. Hmm. I I see. So you like like you would rather have it get rid of the divisions and do it like the Big Twelve does, like where it's just exactly. top two that's, teams. That's what I would be a proponent for. The yeah. only thing, of course, is. I, and honestly, it's kind of it's a it's a what's the word I'm looking for here. It's a compliment, I guess, to the Ohio State Michigan rivalry. I think that rivalry mm. alone is one of the reasons that they don't go to that because mm. they don't want they don't want the the rematch to be one week apart. And Michigan uh, Ohio State's always going to play the last week of the regular season. Um, yeah. For example, the biggest rivalry in the Big 12 has got to be OU Texas, and they're playing again in their rematch for the for the Big 12 title. Yeah, but there was seven weeks in between. Yeah, yeah, I I see what you're saying. That would be God. That would I kind of like that format that the Big 12 does. I I see what you're saying because the divisions obviously in the Big 10 are lopsided. I mean. Let's just say what it is. I mean, the what was I mean, sure, Wisconsin on the other side has been, you know, good, but I mean, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. I mean, it's just no comparison. The East is much better than the West, and to kind of right. even it out and do like that, um, just you have all fourteen teams, and just you say the top two would go on to Indy. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. I do, but then other teams wouldn't really like. And you I mean, wouldn't see a Northwestern ever in a Big Ten championship game, right? They wouldn't. I mean, they even though they went they went eight and one in the conference, they went the same as Michigan. They wouldn't mm-hmm. be in this week mm-hmm. because Michigan beat Michigan. Well, we'd have a three way tie: Ohio State beating Michigan, uh, Michigan beating Northwestern. Mm-hmm. And then Ohio State and Northwestern obviously didn't play, mm. so you would have Michigan and Ohio State this week again. Yeah, that would suck and for I mean, Northwestern. It, <laughs> see, it's it's kind of an it's kind of an awkward position, right? Because yeah, I think what they fear they don't ever want to get to the original game at the end of the year, and it doesn't have any meaning because both teams have already clinched. Of course, it's always going to have some kind of meaning. But they, especially you know, with like with regards to the college football playoff. Um, but I just don't think that they don't they don't want teams to kind of say, okay, well, you know, we don't want to necessarily have to show everything when we know in all reality the game next week is a lot more important in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, I I see what you're saying there. Um, God, I. It'd be interesting if they moved to that, but I would hate. Like I, I, I love Northwestern. Like it's awesome that Northwestern is in this game, and they're probably going to lose. Mean, but it's it's awesome. I think it's awesome for their fans. It's awesome for the program. It's a great story, right? They started out zero and three uh, with a loss to Akron, and yeah. then they ran the table in the Big Ten. Aside from their game against Michigan, yeah. which they. We're up seventeen, nothing to start. So, <laughs> yeah. um, I I'm not trying to take anything away from them. I think they, you know, obviously they did what they had to. Yeah. And you know, it might sound kind of whiny uh, <laughs> to complain about the divisions and all of that, but I uh, I'm looking at like what the Big Twelve has going on today, and that that's just a lot more exciting. Yeah. And I, you know, it's great for North. Like I said, great for Northwestern fans. Uh, we'll see how great it is at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think There's they the got a shot? There. I, I think they got a shot. I'm sorry? I think Northwestern's got a shot. Uh, I mean, 
I think so. It's interesting because they play the to- totally opposite defense uh, of Michigan, where mm-hmm. they they're going to rush for. They might bring the the linebacker to occasionally, but they're predominantly zone defense where they kind of keep they kind of keep everything in front of them and they don't want to get beat deep and they're just going to bank on you being inaccurate or making mistakes. Whereas Michigan, Michigan did implement some zone, but it was kind of too late and you could tell that they weren't well versed in the zone defense as they blew some coverages over the top last week. But uh, I think Mm -hmm. it it would take Ohio state playing a really bad game. Uh, yeah, to lose. That's what I mean. That's what I chalk it up to. Uh, probably like at least at least two turnovers, and then like a big special teams play, and then Northwestern yeah. has to like play perfect, pretty much. Um, yeah, can't turn the ball over. They've got to yeah. you know establish establish the run, keep the keep their defense off the field as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, keep the Ohio State offense kind of waiting and kind of hope that they fall out of rhythm. But I I don't like their chances today. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, what am I kidding? I, I just think the, the speed on Ohio State is just – it'll be too much. And, I mean, it was too much for us. Yeah. And, shit, I, yeah, I can only imagine really against was. Northwestern. Another thing that I'll point to with regards to last week's game mm. is something that I think it's something so simple, but it's kind of being overlooked. I think without a doubt, Ohio State played their best game in the entire year, and mm-hmm. Michigan arguably played their worst. I mean, you can point to the Notre Dame game a little yeah. bit. You know, I'll listen to that argument, but from a defensive standpoint, it was definitely the worst game that they played. And, you know, Don Brown's totally in charge of that. Uh, the offense put up 39 points, and I understand, you know, a lot of it came a little bit later. Yeah. Um, one of them was off a turnover, mm-hmm. uh, essentially off of a turnover with the special teams error by Ohio State. But, you know, I, I don't think things are, you know, things are getting old, but they're not as bad as people make it out to be. Mm-hmm. Speaking of like the thirty nine points and the offense, I just hate how Michigan it, it, they have this mentality of like the old like bow days, like the big t- old like Big Ten football. Like oh, we're gonna we're gonna fucking run the ball, and they did. They ran the ball forty times, and I get like four yards of carry. Like okay, that's good, but. I just wish we would give up those days because I I don't think that's how you win in today's college football world. You win by, like, Oklahoma, like that offense, or West Virginia, or Clemson, Alabama, all these teams, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely definitely agree. Alabama's kind of – Alabama, to me, is, like, the perfect hybrid of, of, like, Oklahoma and then, like, honestly, like, Michigan – like they've got the power run game and they've got the spread offense all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I think they've got it down. I will say the game plan going in, I can understand where Harbaugh was coming from. If you look at it, uh, he was the last two years they were in the game. The defense held up, but it was the offense's mistakes, and they were largely mistakes in the throwing game that hindered them from getting that W. Uh-huh. So I think he came in thinking, okay, the defense is going to take care of us. We can run the ball a little bit here and there and, uh, you know, kind of just march down the field. Mm-hmm. And Ohio State wasn't having any of it. Uh, you know, they did get four yards of pop, like you mentioned. Yeah. What I was kind of – what I was – what I was kind of – the second down play calling in that game was terrible. <laughs> uh you'd get like a second and one or second and two and they'd go play action. They could bootleg and Ohio state would be blitzing and Shea would take a sack. Um, and then you're looking at third and 10 mm-hmm. that happened at least twice. Mm-hmm. And it was in 
kind of some critical situations where, you know, if you just pound it with Ben, out of all the times to run the ball, if you just pound it with Ben Mason or pound it with Higdon, you're picking up the first, moving the chains, wearing that defense down, opening some things up. Mm-hmm. It's it, That is the one area of concern to me is um, – some of the some of the situational play calling, not so much the play calling as a whole, but just the situational play calling to me just doesn't make a whole lot of sense sometimes. And wait, it's it's Pep Hamilton's the coordinator, offensive coordinator, yeah. right? The, so, so Michigan has that kind of weird thing where they he's their like passing game coordinator slash oh, right. offensive coordinator. Okay, uh, but. From my understanding, the entire offense runs through Harbaugh. So I, how it works, I have no idea. It seems pretty complicated and seems pretty – like you don't get a whole lot of time to dial up a play or get a play in and then communicate it to your quarterback, especially not having the benefit of like a headset in the quarterback's helmet mm-hmm. as you do in the NFL. Um, but basically – from my understanding, I'll give you an example. Like Pep Hamilton, like the Pep Hamilton and Harbaugh will be talking, and then maybe like a third person on offense, whether it be like Jim McElwain or last year it was Drevno. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all communicating. First, they decide: Are we going run? Or are we going pass? If it's pass, then Hamilton kind of, you know, is like, okay, well. We've got, let's go with this. Then Harbaugh kind of says, okay, I like that, or no, I don't like that. We're going to go back to a run. Mm. And then the run, it's just, so it's kind of like this like tangled web. Um, and people have at like last year, it drew a lot of criticism because they asked the players, like, who calls the plays? And the, player, and the players, of course, didn't want to say. So their answer was, I don't really know. So then that kind of got like a, kind of had a bad look to it. Wow. But, Man, I tell you what, if we could – it th- this is one thing. Harbaugh is a great recruiter. I think he manages the game relatively well. Um, you've got kind of like a defensive head coach in Don Brown. If we could go out and just get an offensive coordinator and just Harbaugh kind of swallow his pride a little bit and just mm-hmm. says, hey, this is your offense. If there's anything I don't like, you know, I've kind of got like the power to veto. But, hey, it's your offense. Let's go. Uh-huh. I think that'd be like perfect. And the uh, the one guy, like we were talking on the thread about Cliff Kingsbury, but he just got yeah. picked up by USC. Smart. Well, so actually, it's reported that that's actually not official yet. Oh, really? Uh, oh. USC. Yeah, it was re- it was originally reported as official, and USC reached out. Our USC has definitely made an offer. Um, but it is not official, and they're thinking that some teams kind of came out of nowhere, and that's kind of drawn the interest of Kingsbury. So uh, it's kind of a to be determined as uh-huh. of right now. And wait, that was to the be their. Um, game day oh shit! At Buff- Fuck you, ads. <laughs> 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 um, that was that. Um, that was to be offensive coordinator. That was yeah yeah. How did yeah yeah? I was um. I was on this uh, website trying to look at uh, like top offensive coordinators and goddamn Buffalo Wild Wings popped up. Wings Beer Sports, but um, the, the the Cliff Kingsbury was that to USC offered him to be their offensive coordinator, not their head coach, right? Kind of, I kind of heard that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, that's where it all went down downhill um what was i saying though oh about uh kingsbury um they offered him to yeah, be so the that's not official yet and did they they offered him to be the offensive coordinator like not the offensive head coach coordinator yep although and, i don't know why they kept clay that dude yeah <laughs> yeah i don't i don't really get it either um I think Phil made a good point. Phil, friend of the show. Oh, uh, he's part of he, Thread. Yeah, he, uh, he made a good point that it's probably like a handshake deal. Like, okay, you're the coach in waiting. Should uh, Helton kind of, you know, mm-hmm. not do as well again this year? Mm. 
I, I could see that, you know, a meeting on the tarmac <laughs> handshake <laughs> deal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Clay Helton is uh, um thirty two and seventeen at USC. It's like not yeah. bad, but No, it's not good. Yeah. And people are upset with Harbaugh. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> but Clay Helton did win the Pac twelve. I didn't realize this in 2017. Who did they beat that year? I'm looking it up. right. Uh, they beat Stanford in the Pac-12 championship game. And then they lost to Ohio State in the Cotton Bowl. Yep. So, so he's got that over Harbaugh. Yeah, sure does. <laughs> I wonder, man, like, like Michigan has been down – I mean, they're back up now, but USC, like, took a hard fall after Carroll. Texas took a hard fall after Mac Brown. And I just, it baffles me that those places took that much of, like, a step back. Like, those are, like, the powerhouses right there. Yeah. I, and they're, they get recruits, but I just, I don't know. It's just, it's weird especially usc when you have california and los angeles is right there and you i'm sure can get five stars like nobody's business yeah it's just one of those things i mean you look at recruiting which does matter and they haven't recruited as well um they just Mm -hmm. haven't they haven't been in they haven't had too many classes in the top 10 um Mm. And that's really, I mean, it's recruiting isn't everything, but it's it's a lot. Oh yeah, it's a lot. I mean, there actually is a direct correlation to like recruiting and national championships. I mean, in Michigan, yeah. to Harbaugh's credit, has been recruiting well, and they've continued to recruit well. Uh, last year, they took they didn't take as many guys, so they finished with like a twenty two overall recruiting class. But other than that. Harbaugh hasn't finished outside, outside the uh, the top ten, and this year they're like at like five or six. So, oh wow, I didn't realize that. But now, wouldn't you say though, there's a difference between recruiting and then developing these guys into like all Big Ten players and like For NFL sure. draft and picks. I, I, if we'll look at Michigan's 2016 class. Uh, Devin Bush was a three star, mm-hmm. wasn't heavily recruited. Okay. Um, you yeah. look at a guy like man, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of some more. Uh Levert Hill and David Long, those were all kind of higher end recruits. Mm-hmm. Um Josh Vitalis, who kinda came on, he was a three star recruit. Um I'm pulling uh, up right now. P- Pretty Pay and Josh Uche, who uh kind of showed some promise. Those were those guys were three star recruits from what I recall. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think mm-hmm. he he's developing guys fine. Um, just got to kind of keep after it. I, I'm looking at that class. So that was 2016. Um, who else was on here? Uh, Bredesen, 2016. He's pretty good. Um, Verhill, Devin Bush, you mentioned Chris Evans, uh, Eubanks, uh, Kalik Hudson was only a three star. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, who else was in this class? Qu- oh, Quinn Nordine. <laughs> um, oh, Uche. I love Uche. Oh, yeah. And he's I mean, a stud. He was only three star. He's going to be good. Yeah. I had never heard of him until that game where uh, Rashawn didn't play. I, I forget what game that it might have been the Michigan State game, and Uche came in and like tore it up. I'd never heard of him before that. Yeah, he's a he's a pass rushing specialist. Uh, mm-hmm. He's got he's got a lot of just kind of natural pass rushing abilities, and he he came in as like a super raw talent. So. Um, you kind of talk about 
you know, developing. I mean, you look at a guy like him, he's kind of, they're developing guys. And if you go back and look at, like, that's one thing I'm not concerned about because at, at Stanford, uh, Harbaugh didn't have the best of recruiting classes. If you want to pull that up, mm-hmm. uh, there was, he put a lot of guys in the league, and there's some, like, good ones in there that uh, he recruited that weren't, uh, that weren't four and five star guys. Um, so it's kind of a mix. Like you want it, it's good because they're, you know, that they can evaluate these guys really well. So continue to take, you know, the four and the five stars, but you know that, you know, if they do have some two and three, I mean, look at Ronnie Bell, Ronnie Bell was an unranked recruit. He was about to go play basketball. Ah, uh, okay. And he wow. did, and he did really well for the team this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. He, wait, was he the receiver or tight end? Yep. Okay, receiver. Yeah. Um, Joe, I, I did pull up here. MGo blog Harbaugh, uh, Stanford recruits slash players drafted under Harbaugh, um, 2010. Toby Gerhart, uh, who was also a Heisman finalist. Uh, Jim Dre, never really heard of him. Eric Lorig, never heard of him. 2011, uh, oh, Richard Sherman, uh, Doug Baldwin. Yeah, uh, Doug Baldwin was a two-star. Yeah, yeah, it does say that here, two-star. Sherman was a three-star. Yeah, and I think, uh, is Kobe Fleener in there? Kobe Fleener, oh, yeah. Uh, yes, yep, 2012. Yep. Yeah, he was a three star. Three star David DeCastro, um, who's on Carl Steelers, I think still. Um, of course Andrew Luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh Jonathan Martin, I remember him. Uh Griff Griff Whalen, I vaguely remember. And then Zach Ertz, Stefan Taylor, uh Ed Reynolds, Tyler Gaffney, Ben Gardner, Ryan Hewitt. What the? Um, yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. I mean, you're right. I mean, he has put players in the league, which is what you want to see. Even at Stan, that is yeah, surprising he, at Stanford, too. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, they de- he definitely has an eye for talent, even if they're not even if they're not highly recruited, but still at the same time you want him to go out and get those beast five-star guys. Those mm-hmm. guys that are going to be difference makers. The guys that the guys that take you from winning 10 games to winning 12 games. Mm-hmm. That's what I think I, he's doing that. I, I've gotten frustrated with previous like high Michigan recruits like, like Will Campbell, five-star, and uh, like uh, Bobakar, Sissoko, and Kareem Walker. Yeah, <laughs> Kareem Walker. Um, Kareem Walker was definitely one miss under Harbaugh, but I. Not all of that is. Not all of that is on the field, like lack of on the field performance. A lot mm-hmm. of it is, is off the field in the classroom stuff. Oh, but, I got you. Yeah. He's uh he did finish up his uh, junior college or community college year. He's actually on his way to Mississippi State, where he's going to play for uh, Moorhead, who was the former offensive coordinator at Penn State when they were really good the last couple of years. Oh, well, good for him! Yeah, Damn. I'm not sure. I'm not saying he's going to be Saquon Barkley <laughs> by any means, but I still think he's a serviceable back, yeah. a serviceable running back for sure. Speaking of running backs, there was also Derek Green under Hope. Derek Green, oh, yeah. God. I remember, yeah, Joe, I remember, because I was with the team, and yeah. he, was, um, he wasn't part of that freshman class that um, I, when I worked for the team that came in. He was, he was the year after, but he, for some reason, he came in for a workout. I, I don't know how it was like, NCAA rules allowed it. He might have gotten his, like, graduated early so he could kind of do whatever he wanted. But he came in for a workout, and I remember looking at him, and he was just, like, so ripped. 
as like not even a freshman in college. And I saw him like work out, like one of our coaches put him through a workout and the coach like gave me like a, like a little, like, like a face or like a eye, like, uh, this, like this kid's going to be the real deal. And I, 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 I left, uh, Schembechler hall that day. Like, man, we like, damn, like this guy's going to be Chris Perry. <laughs> and of yeah, course he wasn't. Then- it was weird, right? Because like that's everything that everybody had heard. He was good on film, uh, but then you know his uh, weight. He put on, he, then he put on like forty pounds. Yeah, out of nowhere. nowhere. God, and, and to think we could have yeah. had Ezekiel Elliott instead of yeah. Derek Green <laughs> or, or Derek Henry. Oh, really? Okay. Damn. So that Derek Green is like the top rated running back in that class and then mm-hmm. he's of course a boss and then the next three are like playing on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The next next three are all first round all Americans. Yeah, that's I just hate how we miss on players like that and I I just hope that guy like like um a guy like Donovan Peoples Jones doesn't become that, but I, I've been dis- kind of disappointed a little bit in DPJ. I get he's only a sophomore, but because okay. uh, because I was an idiot and I I clicked out of the Google Chrome. Oh, uh, it's all good. <laughs> I just got too excited. Um, Talking about Derek Green. Talking, yeah, trashing Derek Green, and then um, I don't know if you heard me. I I was semi trashing Donovan Peoples Jones. Uh see, that's one. He uh, he's pretty good. I mean, and he's only getting better. I mean, he just finished his second year of football. Yeah. No, I I get that. Um, and I get he's he's athletic. And he's got the size, but he, he also had... you got to think about the offense that he's in. He's not being used optimally. That's fair to say. Yeah, because I'd I'd like to see Donovan Peoples Jones get a hundred yard game, which he has yet to eclipse. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine if they went to like? A spread offense still had some power run game, but if they went to a, a true spread offense with DPJ, Tariq Black, Nico Collins, Zach Gentry, who uh, he need, uh, his play at the end of the year was disappointing. Yeah, but soft. Could you imagine if they did like four wide with those guys? It would. I would like to see it. I I would. And then hey, I mean you could even have Chris Evans as like a Dion Lewis or you know Yeah, uh, exactly. Or like send him on the wheel route. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that's where Michigan's I I just hope we leave like the oh, we got to have a full back like with with his hand on the ground and we got to have a three bl- tight end set. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta, have, we gotta have a blocking tight end like, um, like uh, Tyler Massey, or you know, <laughs> like I just hope we leave those days kind of behind. And I'm not saying go to like full um, spread option like with Denard and you know those days, but like you said, uh, Alabama is a very balanced team, or. Ohio State even or you know and they're Clemson. still they're still balanced despite being like a spread offense yeah oh yeah and they still send running backs to the league like every oh, year Alabama's sure. got a great running back and a great receiver like every single year yep that's that's what I hope maybe to uh so Pep Hamilton is actually interviewing for the Maryland job oh I saw that yeah Maybe if he left, maybe Harbaugh would kind of swallow his pride a little bit and mm-hmm. bring in somebody 
that were just kind of who knows? Maybe Michigan called called Cliff Kingsbury, and maybe that's why he's not going to USC. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that's probably some wishful thinking, mm-hmm. considering that he's got some NFL attention. Mm. But at the same time, it'd be it'd be fun. Where Kingsbury's at, uh, or he was at Texas Tech. Yep, Texas right. Tech. Okay. God, that I'd and love Texas to see. Texas Tech actually brought in uh, the Utah State coach who ran that no huddle, super tempo, and Air gave rain. Michigan State a run for their money. Interesting. Okay. God, I, I'd love to. I'd love to see it. I, I would love to see that in Michigan air raid, a eleven offense. <laughs> I mean, we all know. We all know you'd love to. Uh, you you'd love to see Rich Rod come mm. back and mend the fences and be the offensive coordinator. I. I don't think that would ever happen. No. Ever. I think we'll see. I think we'll see two Lions Super Bowls before that happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe you know what? Maybe I I would be more inclined to think it would happen if there wasn't uh, if he didn't have that uh, fiasco at Arizona that got him fired, like where he like cheated on his wife and stuff. Yeah. I I don't think that would fly at Michigan. No, and I mean, even that, it would, even if that didn't happen, it would still be a stretch. But yeah, but the 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 Rich Rod offense is it's mostly like running the ball, which I just again I just don't think that's gonna win us games. I remember looking at like his statistics at Michigan. There was like one year he they ran the ball like sixty five percent of the time with like fucking Brandon Miner. And fucking Dinar. It's like, well, yeah, no wonder we lost to. No wonder we went like five and seven that year. With, but I do love me some Brandon Miner though, because that boy ran hard. He was a uh, <laughs> one of my good buddies from home. His dad's favorite all-time Michigan running back is Brandon Miner. <laughs> out of all, out of my car. Tyrone Wheatley, yeah. Tim Bianca Batuka, uh, Chris Perry, and Chris Perry. <laughs> His favorite is Brandon Miner. Dude, Brandon Miner, I-, I will say this: he just ran so hard, like he he wasn't a he guy pun- who was going to juke punished, you. He was looking to punish people. Yeah, I did appreciate that about Brandon Miner, but. I wouldn't say he's my favorite running back. <laughs> no, it just it didn't help. It didn't help that he played on such like a, you know, just just not great teams. Mm-hmm. He was kind of like the Brandon Graham of that off. Like Brandon Graham was amazing, but it didn't help because he was on such a bad defense. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon Miner definitely fit, and I think he was a Lloyd Carr recruit anyway. Probably um, was. Yeah. And. Yeah, it just it was kind of, you know, he, he didn't really fit that offense. Basically, he wasn't built right. for that offense. Um, I at my favorite running back, I think at Michigan was I really like Fitz, Fitz Toussaint. Yeah, he, he was he was underrated. Um, he, he didn't get the he didn't get the uh, the love that he deserved while he was there. Um, for me, it's just kind of, it's. For me, I struggle with that kind of question because right away Mike Hart pops to mind, mm-hmm. but I struggle. As much as it kills me, I struggle to, to pick. Like, how can a guy be your favorite but went zero and four against Ohio State? That's fair to say. Yeah. I mean, that's my like. If people want to point to like wide receivers, like okay, Braylon, like he never lost, and I. On the flip side, those guys never lost to MSU, so that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> but they never beat Ohio State either. God, yeah, that's at least Fitz did in 2011. Right. Yeah, <laughs> against that depleted 
Thanks very, for the team. Very depleted, but Braxton Miller led Ohio State team. That yeah, still well, made it close. Hopefully, we don't have to hang our hang our hat on that hook for too much longer. <laughs> Joe, I just it, remember remember when we talked last week, and I said, "If not now, when?" Yep. Like, God, I'm, um, I'm it better to lose be hope. it better be next year because you're getting. So yeah, let's talk about next year. Let's talk. Talk to me, Joe. We're, we're gonna get. We're gonna get the defense is all. It, not all coming back. The defense is gonna be a little bit. We're gonna have some new pieces. Uh, Gary's gone. Winovich is gone. Um, and I don't want to say that those guys are just like easy replacements, but I do think with Quiddy Pay and Josh Uche. Mm-hmm. I think they're ready to kind of step into that role. Um, Devin Bush, probably losing him, that's going to be a huge loss. I, I love Devin Bush's um, like swagger that he brought yeah, to the his team. Swagger and just his like leadership. Yeah. Um, and he was a guy that didn't take any shit. I mean, just look at you know people complain and say, oh, you know, it was classless what he did. Um, it was worse than Joe Bolden putting the stake in the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, the difference between, like, Joe Bolden and Devin Bush is, like, Devin Bush, like, like he he backed it up. Yeah. Um, I've so never... it's fine. It's fine by me. And he also, he also didn't just, like, come out and do that just for, like, some kind of, like, motivational thing. Like, he was, he was instigated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've never seen a a player get more like um, personal personal foul penalties for helmet to helmet hits than Devin Bush has gotten. Yeah, he's gotten a few and probably could have deserved a few more. But, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. Um, so yeah, he's gone next year. Uh, probably losing the corners, which kind of stings. David Long and Levert Hill. Uh, Brandon Watson's gone, but you know. Good yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, man, he, he did was, get torched. He was just getting beat so bad, and that's the thing. Like, I always thought he was a little bit slower, but he would like, he would like make, he would still make the play, he'd find a way to like bat the ball away. Mm-hmm. But a lot of those were in like downfield situations, whereas they were just like dragging his ass across the middle, and he just couldn't keep up. Yeah. Um. So and they've they've recruited really well. I'm struggling with names, but they've recruited really well to kind of replenish the defense. And under Don Brown, I mean, I'm not too worried. He's going to get it fixed. He'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, offensively, you've got almost everybody back. Almost everybody. You're going to lose Higdon. Um, oh. Hopefully, hopefully Bredesen doesn't leave early. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that. I mean, we do need a running back to stuff. I don't. I don't know that Chris Evans is a three-down back in the Big Ten. I don't think so either, to be honest. Um, Shea Patterson. Uh, we'll see what he decides uh, to do. But either way, yeah. I feel this is the first. Like I, I feel so comfortable if he leaves. Like I, I do want him to come back, but at the same time, I feel so comfortable if he leaves. Because you've got McCaff- you're gonna have the McCaffrey and Milton uh, battle in camp. I loved what I the most positive thing I took from the Ohio State game was at the very end when Milton or yeah yeah it was Milton. Um, Dude, bombed. those throws, those yeah. throws, my god. Yeah, as a freshman, bombing it fifty plus yards. <laughs> They they say he can throw like sixty from his knees. Oh my gosh! So if there was ever a time to kind of you know implement that full spread on offense, you know, with a guy like that, yeah, my my goodness. <laughs> but but is he um is he mobile? I mean, I know he had that he, rushing touchdown. He's relatively mobile. He's not like a he's not like a Denard. He's not like a like Devin Devin Gardner. Ah. Uh, That'd probably be a good comparison as far as his mobility, I would say. Mm-hmm. That's probably a pretty good comparison. Yeah, okay. I mean, McCaffrey's mobile, too. 
from what I saw in Notre he, Dame. He, and he's very he's probably quicker just because he's got he's got nice long strides and he's just got that he's got that McCaffrey jeans. So <laughs> Oh right, right, Christian and Ed and yeah, yeah. yeah I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, so next year running back wise we're looking at like we're looking at Chris Evans, True Wilson, and Omari Samuels, who they were pretty high on. Mm, okay. Uh, he didn't get to play a whole ton this year, but yeah, Omari Samuels and uh, uh, there's this kid, 2018 recruit Christian Turner that I yep. see. Yeah. Um, three star from Georgia. Yeah, he is supposed to be kind of like a kind of kind of like a Higdon ish kind of. He can he can lower the pads a little bit here and there. He's not going to blow you away with his speed. Uh huh. But he's kind of like, he's Higdon ish. Yeah, Higdon ish. I mean, I liked Higdon a lot. And Omari Samuels is honestly actually the same way. They don't have any wide receiver or they don't have any running backs that are just going to go untouched. Uh huh. You know, eighty yards unless they unless the offensive line just does an incredible job, but. Yeah, I I got you. I did forget we do lose John Runyon, who improved a lot this year. Um, Oh uh, damn, we do. But Jalen Jalen Mayfield or Chuck Filiaga should be ready to step in for him. I love your knowledge of all these of all these recruits. (laughs) I'm like (laughs) I'm like trying to catch up. I got like two like four windows open here, Joe. Trying to look at like all these recruits. And you're just whipping them out. Yeah. Well, I get a lot of flack for my knowledge of recruiting, but it's whatever. No, I like it. I I tried to do, before I called you, I tried to do like a little bit of research, but I was like, man, it's, I, I'd rather just wing it. Cause, yeah. <laughs> and that's what we have the internet for. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the offensive side of the ball is going to be fine. It's just going to kind of be down the scheme. The defense the defense is kind of weird because you know what the scheme is. You just, you're just you hoping that the personnel kind of comes in and plays just as well as the guys before them. Mm-hmm. And so far they have. I mean, everybody was kind of concerned about, kind of concerned about losing, like, um, Jeremy Clark and Jordan Lewis. Yeah. And then th- we kind of fell into David Long and Levert Hill. So mm-hmm. you just hope that that kind of trend continues. And the way they've recruited, it shouldn't be a problem. So next next year, um, I'm looking at the schedule. Yep. I mean, it's kind of weird to talk. We still got one game left, but. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Who's probably, <laughs> by the way, is probably going to be against Florida for the uh, 50th time in the last nine years. Oh, no. No. And the pe- yeah, so it's gonna be the Peach Bowl. Peach Bowl, okay. Unless Ohio, if Ohio State makes the playoff, then Michigan, Michigan's going to the Rose Bowl against Washington, who beat uh, who beat yeah. Utah last night. You, you watched that game. I I watched only the first half. Okay. Yeah. The second half was pretty much like the first half. <laughs> Defense, like, definitely. I I thought it would be like you know typical Pac-12 game like 40 you know 42 to 40 or something like that but right surprising to see what yeah that, I mean 10 7 or 10 3 uh, yeah I don't really know what to make of what I watched last night and then now <laughs> you've got you've got Oklahoma Texas on and Texas of course already scored on their first drive and now I'm sure it's only a matter of time before Oklahoma scores here as they just throw a 50-yard pass down the field and it's completed. Ah, oh, jeez. I got to turn that game on. Ah. Oh. Um that rivals the uh, point a minute Michigan teams of like the yeah, 20s. For sure. <laughs> yeah, um, Michigan Michigan schedule next year. Um you were saying it's This is really interesting. Middle Tennessee State and then army it's not, it's not it's not basketball so we're good yeah we, we, we're good right right and then we play army i like that we play army um, uh see i'm is that is that next year next yeah that's next year i like uh, playing those service like the academies 
I think it's kind of cool. only thing is you got to watch out for injuries because they like to they like to like they like to chop block and oh, cut. Yeah. That that because is because they point. obviously can't like just kind of go mall for mall with you. Mm-hmm. That that is a good point, Joe. I've ne- I never thought about that. The chop blocking. When you know their their offensive linemen are probably only as big as like Gentry or like McKeon. For yeah, us. like their their left their left guard is like a uh, McKeon. Yeah. <laughs> After Army, though, we have a bye week, and then we get right into the Big Ten. With yeah, I think they have like two bye weeks next year. It's kind of weird. They do. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, bye week: Wisconsin, Rutgers, Iowa for homecoming. Thank God, because we would lose if it was at Iowa. Yep. And and then at Illinois, I like to see. Illinois on the schedule. We don't play them a whole lot. I uh, I actually might go to that game. Oh, really? So, yeah, I, uh, I've i been doing this thing now, as you know, where I try to get to as many of the uh, Big Ten schools as I can. Mm-hmm. So two years ago, I mean, I've been to State. Um, mm-hmm. Two years ago, we went to Purdue. Oh, that's um, right. Last year, or this season, we went to Northwestern. So next year, I actually want to do Wisconsin and Illinois. I've never, I've never been yeah. to Camp Randall yet. I, oh, that that Wisconsin would be fun. Jumping around in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Jumping around and stuff. <laughs> uh, we after Illinois at Penn State, and then we play Notre Dame at home. Yeah, it's the it's the latest I think that Notre Dame and uh, Michigan have ever played. Wow, that's that's interesting. And then and at, I know Sparty's really late too. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. At Maryland, then another bye week, and then Michigan State on November sixteenth. Yep. And then at Indiana, and then Ohio State. Yeah, home. so last year pretty much ends the same way that this year did with uh, Indiana and Ohio State. I've, of course, just flip-flopping who's home and who's away. Mm-hmm. God, that's, that's it's really an interesting. It's an interesting schedule. Yeah. Um, I do kind of like the two bye weeks. I, uh, mm-hmm. I almost kind of wish that uh, Illinois was kind of in between Penn State and Notre Dame. I, that... That back to back right there is kind of tough. Yeah, that will be tough. But the twenty twenty schedule, we got a we're going to Washington. Yep. Wow. I would like to. I would like to go there. Go to Seattle. I have heard uh, they were um, on on the Fox broadcast. They Brady Quinn was talking about how like. Washington Husky Stadium is like one of the best stadiums in the country. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to check it out. Hopefully that game stays and it doesn't get canceled. Why would it get canceled? From the rain or something? No, just uh, teams can back out. Like this year, the only reason, honestly, that we got – well, we had to cancel Arkansas this year. I remember and that. next year, yeah, because we because Notre Dame said, "Hey, let's do it." So uh-huh. we had to pay. We had to pay Arkansas like a, like a lot of money to back out of that. Mm, okay, that was set up too, like when Hoke was a coach. Those games. Yep. yep. Wow. And in the future, we have home and homes with Oklahoma in like 2026. Uh, have to make sure Carl brings his AARP card on that trip. So he can get cheap, <laughs> cheap hotels, <laughs> hundred dollar rooms. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They this is on like the Michigan Athletic website. They do say here Oklahoma, twenty twenty five and twenty twenty six. I think Texas is somewhere Te- on that too. Yep, Texas in twenty twenty four, twenty twenty seven, um, and then UCLA. In 2022 and 23. Wow. Yeah, that's that's crazy. So we got that look to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully we got some Big Ten titles by then. Yeah, I I would hope so. I don't want the first time us playing in the Rose Bowl to be when we play at UCLA in 2023. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny because so Wilton Spate obviously transferred to UCLA. Oh yeah, yeah. If you would have if you would have told Wilton Spate when he committed to Michigan that he would start multiple games at the Rose Bowl, he probably thought he would have had a good career. <laughs> yeah. His and he has been starting for UCLA? I haven't really he, paid attention. Yeah, he started he started for them. They went like three and nine this year. Ah, that's but they bad. did beat their rival. They did beat USC. Oh, for that uh, victory bell. I um. Yeah. So he uh he didn't beat Ohio State, but he got to beat USC. That's a hell of an accomplishment, and I, I love that rivalry because yeah. both teams wear their home uniforms. Yep, I, I love. Obviously, that. Michigan and Ohio State could do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, they could. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Michigan is the more of the traditionalist in that regard, though. Uh, Ohio State, more times than not, breaks out like either like the gray helmets or the black mm-hmm. helmets, or yeah, the, yeah. I um, they also did. They did something weird one year with like green outlines on like their helmet stickers. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of emphasize the uh, the Buckeye leaf. Yes. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't mind seeing that. I wouldn't mind seeing Michigan going back to May's pants on the road. There's a lot of people that are on that bandwagon. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not against it. It it might be time. Not that I I don't hate the all white because. I think it just looks clean. I like yeah. all white, but the big question is when they play Florida again for the ninetieth time in four years, do you think they'll bust out the all maze again? Oh no. I hated that so much, Joe. Did you did you so I was there in person. Yeah. And they did not look as bad in person as they did on T V. T I just think we looked like West Virginia. I just yeah. didn't think it looked good. I have kind of a I have kind of a hot take. Uh oh. Uh, it depends who you talk to. Uh oh. I honestly wish that now I know it's cool for like the recruits and everything, but I almost kinda wish that like in football at least, I wish that we could just be outfitted by Nike instead of Jordan. Even though they're they're the same thing. Mm-hmm. I just kinda miss the Nike swoosh on the jerseys. Yeah. I I hear what you're saying there, um, but but at the same time I know recruits look at that and they're like, oh damn, so it, it works for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah, you know the Jordan brand helps helps with that recruiting. Who, by the way, they're not even the only Jordan school anymore for football. Yeah, I saw Oklahoma's now Jordan and, and, and Florida. Oh, really? Ugh. So we might get a, a bowl game of the Jordan schools. Oh. I just hate to play Florida again, Joe. Yeah, uh. I do. I really do, too. Um, God. Why can't I would like to play, like, how about, how about, like, we play Texas? Yeah. Or how about we play, like, Washington State or... Mm-hmm. But the way, the way things are just set up now, it kind of really limits your options. Mm, mm-hmm. Like, it was cool when we played, like, a Tim Tebow Florida. But, like, the Florida teams we've been playing lately are just – it's not the same. Like, It'll be interesting if uh, if Jim Ma- Jim McElwain is expected to depart and get a, some kind of coaching job elsewhere after this year. Uh-huh. And he's done a really good job, they say, with us. But um, he'd be returning to Florida – or he'd be playing against his old team, I should say. Yeah. Uh, we'd whoop their ass. Yeah, Hopefully. that's the thing. It's kind of like, and that's the thing too for like narrative sake. Like, like Florida, they play in that crappy SEC division, and 
So they kind of just kind of skirt by. They're kind of like, they're kind of like, uh, I don't know. They're kind of like, they're kind of like Northwestern of this year. Uh huh. Yeah. And they just kind of, they're just kind of there. And you know that they're not as good as what their record is, or they're not as good as what their ranking is. And so now even like the narrative of like, okay, like, now the narrative's going to be like, okay, Harbaugh can't beat anybody else not named Florida in a big game. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of a, I don't know. Like, I, I'm trying to draw a comparison. It's kind of like, like playing, playing Florida would just kind of be like eating like warmed up oatmeal. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's just. Or leftover oatmeal. It's mm-hmm. just not very good. No. <laughs> I like that. It's very, very Bland succinct. And just kind of old. You're just kind of yeah. over it. I don't want to play Florida again. No. God. I would, but that's... Damn it. There's like, literally, there's like an 80% chance right now that that's how it's going to be. Uh, God. I, like, I'd rather play Kentucky. What about Kentucky. They had a good year. Um, the only other team that could, we could possibly face would be LSU. Okay, I take LSU from the SEC, but that would require that would require LSU somehow miraculously jumping Florida, even though they're both. They both don't play this week, and they're ranked back to back with each other. So, oh, uh, okay. I don't know how the committee would do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, you never know. Condoleezza Rice is one crazy, crazy person. Yeah. So yeah. she, I don't know. Well, you know the computers. They told us. They told us this. So. Uh, I think at the end of the day, I think next year, I can see it as soon as next year we get an eight-team playoff. Ooh. Could, I... you imagine, could you imagine if, like, coming into this week, if we if we had an eight-team playoff? Eight teams would be – I mean, then UCF might get a shot. They for sure would be in. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's probably only a matter of – a matter of time and and i and so the argument with an eight team would be would you just take the top eight teams or would you do the power five schools uh their conference champions would mm-hmm. be the top five and then you'd have three at large mm-hmm. hmm. i kind of like taking uh conference champions i do too <laughs> um but that would be more of an argument to get rid of the divisions because what if what if Northwestern beat Ohio State, mm-hmm. and let's say we had an eighteen playoff this week? So then you're not really getting the eight best teams. Mm. Yeah, but don't like if, if you got if you're the best team like in your conference, like yeah, you gotta like you gotta win your conference. You gotta win the game, in, in my opinion. Right. Um, but then maybe Ohio State gets in as an at-large. Yeah, so if we look at it, if we had a 1 through 8 coming into this week, you'd have... And I mean, this. I mean, just think, think about these matchups and think how, how fun this would be for the television networks, the fans, etc. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, definitely money. Oh, like, I mean, the money from it would be insane. enormous. Yeah. So you have a one through eight, or you have a one through eight. You have one versus eight. So it's it's essentially like a quarterfinal. Mm-hmm. You have Alabama versus UCF. So UCF would finally get Bama, who they've been clamoring to get for two years now. Mm-hmm. Clemson versus Michigan. Oh. Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Georgia, Oklahoma. Yeah, those. I mean, those are all like sexy matchups. Definitely. And, and I don't. I mean, I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't go to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are. 
That, like, that would can be you cool tell, to see. Like, I, it, makes, it makes all the sense in the world. And people are going to say, oh, well, you're going to have the same argument where, like, the 9 and 10 teams feel left out. And it's just a you're opening up a can of worms. And it's just going to pretty soon we'll be at 16 team playoff. And yeah. I, disagree, I disagree with that. Mm-hmm. That's the only arguments that I've heard. And, I mean, if you're the 9 and 10, I mean, yeah, you were close, but you just, I don't think you deserved it at that point. The one thing, if they go to that, as far as like where they play these games, I would love to see like doing um, home games, like not neutral sites, but yeah. do home games. So, because I want to see these like Southern teams potentially um, play in cold weather. Yep. And see I'm, how they uh, do. I'm all aboard with that. I think that would be. I think that'd be the way to go. Yeah, because. But I, that being said, um, I wouldn't hold my breath on that. I do think that they would be. I think that some of the bowl locations would get put as like the designated sites, kind of like how the college football playoff does it, where like this it's on a rotational yeah. basis, where like this year it's the. You know, this year it's uh, yeah, whatever it is. The Orange Bowl and the Cotton Bowl are the locate locations for the uh, college football play. I think it'd be the same thing. It would just kind of be on a larger scale, where like yeah. you would also have the Rose Bowl would be a location, etc. Mm-hmm. God, I I would just love to see like Bama potentially play. You know it whatever like notre dame or michigan at south bend or at michigan or at ohio state in in december january yeah (laughs) dude what about i mean the big 10 title game why not rotate that from lucas oil and you could even put it at soldier field yeah i don't i don't think that they want i don't think that they want weather to be a factor in it but this is big Uh, 10 football yeah uh so they're uh the big 10 i was actually looking this up because i was curious the big 10's contracted with uh indianapolis uh for that location or for the big 10 title game it's through like 2022 okay 23 um, and some other candidates that they had would be the new Minneapolis uh, stadium that the Vikings have, uh, oh, of yeah. course, Ford Field. And there was one other that was kind of like, it was kind of an outsider a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, like it was a it was a domed area though. Oh, okay. Because they all looked at, they don't, they don't believe like they would ever go to like Pittsburgh or Soldier Field or yeah. Lambo or Lambo. Like that. <laughs> that would be legendary. A Big Ten championship between like Michigan and Wisconsin at Lambo. Yeah, that they would, would have be... the home field advantage though for sure. Oh yeah, I mean you know Michigan fans would show up, but yeah. They'd come all the way from Calumet. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there. I will say, I do love Indianapolis. It just pains me that I haven't gotten to go there for a Big Ten championship. And I've literally been a play away two out of three years. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll I mean, get there. I, I, I think we'll get there at least once. Yeah, you'd hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Joe, I um, thank you very much for doing yeah, this again. Absolutely, anytime. Uh, um, and I know it's been a while, so you're still getting the kinks worked out as far as everything. So, yeah, sorry maybe, for those technical difficulties. Maybe we can do it again once uh, once Michigan's official bowl matchup has been determined. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna do it again for sure, very soon. Um, All right, and. Um, I'm trying to think. January 11th, we were talking about that for uh, thread gathering. Yeah. Right. Um, shit. We we should even do like an in person, because I could easily get like another microphone on this thing, and we yeah. would do it. That'd be fun. Hell, I could even get uh, I could get two more microphones on here, 
and we'd have like the whole thread. Yeah, we could do that on this. It'd be fun. It'd be crazy, but it'd be crazy, but it'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. We'll be in touch. We'll, we'll be in touch. I'm gonna have this posted uh, a little later today. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, man. You're very. You're you're a great Michigan man, Joe. Very <laughs> I try. positive. I try. I try. I'm more negative, but <laughs> thanks for making me see the light. I try. You know, <laughs> I mean, I didn't think it'd be too difficult. Your favorite coach is Rich Rodriguez, so. Ah, uh, we should. He needed that fourth year. He needed that fourth year. <laughs> he needed the fourth year. <laughs> well, all right, man. Yeah, take it easy. We'll be in touch. Absolutely. I'll talk right. to you later, Joe. Yep. Bye. JP3, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the podcast. Damn, an hour and a half. God damn it. I got to go eat breakfast now. Um, I think Michigan will be all I, You know what? It, Michigan will be all right. This isn't the past. We're not in this position that we were under Rich Rod, under Hoke. I just think this is what we are. And I hope Harbaugh is the coach to take us over to the top, bring us Big Ten championships, get us to the college football playoff. But I'll believe it when I see it. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. Or I I, I hope he proves me wrong, and I hope he can do it. Guys, that's it. I got to go eat. I'm hungry. I'm going to watch this Texas-Oklahoma game. God bless you all. This has been the longest one. Shit. We'll talk to you later. This is Thread, new title, new, new channel name. Peace, guys.